All right, let's talk more about circles. Uh, today we're going to talk more about tangents, secants, and chords. Uh, we talked pretty in depth about tangents last time, so we'll talk more about those, but also secants and chords as well. Look at the connections that are there. So we're going to explore that by going in onto GeoGebra and looking to see what kind of connections we can find. So I would encourage you to try this on your own. Uh, the link is on the website and you can try this out. But take a look right now. We have what kind of segments are these? LK and JM. What would we consider those segments? Go ahead, shout it out. I can't hear you, but feel free to talk to yourself. I don't care. Yes, that is correct. I think I heard chord. LK is a chord and JM is a chord. So those intersecting chords, uh, we have a special relationship there. Uh, maybe you can guess what that is. Um, I don't need that line in there, but when I draw that line in, you know, what kind of appears? Maybe you think, hey, that looks like those are reflected across. Well, if I flip that triangle over that are formed by that chord, it does appear that, yes, it reflects across, and then it's a dilation. So when I reflect it and dilate it, I can see that those two triangles have to be similar. So parallel lines show that I have uh, corresponding angles here, and these are corresponding angles, and they share an angle here at C. So with that connection, since I know that uh, those are uh, similar triangles and I know that those have to be corresponding, I can match up corresponding sides. So I'm going to take the time to set up that equation uh, and let's see what kind of connection we have. So if I match up MC uh, corresponds with segment KC in the same way that LC is similar to JC. Uh, the big side of the big triangle corresponds to the smaller side. So hopefully we can see that connection there that these are just reflections and dilations and we have uh, those corresponding ratios and we have that proportion that's formed there. We can use that to help us solve problems where this is involved. So as we take a look back in our notes, well, we have that segment of chords theorem listed for us. And we can take a look at that and we see that um, we have EA times EB equals EC times ED. And that's just showing those cross products because we know EA is similar to EC. Um, in the same way, you know, if we matched up um, ED matches up with EB. And so when we set up our proportion, knowing that these triangles are similar and they reflect across, uh, we would have cross products equal. So E times A, EA times EB is equal to EC times ED, and that's where we get that. So just remember that uh, proportion, you can solve any problem. So why don't you try setting up the proportion for the example one listed here. When you're ready to check over the solution, um, go ahead and restart the video. Okay, so I marked up my diagram showing my similar triangles. So I know x uh, is proportional to x plus 3 in the same way that x plus 1 is proportional to x plus 5. Cross products are equal, so x times x plus 5 equal to x plus 3 times x plus 1. Then I remember how to do that algebra, x times x, x squared plus 5x, and x squared plus 3x plus 1x plus 3. I combine these terms uh, to get 4x, and I subtract an x squared from both sides, and then I subtract 4x from both sides, and I get x equals 3. Question says, though, find ml and jk. So ml is this whole length, which is x plus 1 and x plus 3. So x plus 1 is going to be 4, x plus 3 is 6, so that means ml will have to be 10. And then as I take a look at the next segment, jk, uh, jk is this whole length, and that is x plus 3, so that's 8, and that is 3, so jk would equal 11. So that's an application of the segment of chords theorem. 
Uh, next, let's go back to GeoGebra and take a look at uh, another scenario. All right, so in this scenario, and you can try this on GeoGebra as well, uh, we're going to explore the segments of secants. Because I know you're all telling me right now that LC and MC are both secants because they cross through at two points and extend through the circle. So what connection is there? Uh, if I draw this line in again, and notice if I were to connect these, they're shaded in. I've got two triangles. But notice, and maybe it becomes more dramatic if I shift this over a little bit, uh, these are aligned. So LM is slanting you know, up and to the right. This one's slanting down to the right. So they don't look similar, but what happens if I flip that one along this line? Notice, hey, they match up this time. So we've got two similar triangles again, um, with starting with this triangle with the segments outside this, the circle, uh, connected with the ones that go all the way through. And so let me try that again. I'll even color code it this time. So notice this top, side, top part outside the triangle, when I flip it, it becomes the corresponding side with the bottom side. And when I take the bottom side outside, when it flips, it becomes corresponding with uh, the top part of the triangle. So if we set up an equation for that, um, so notice if I'm going to compare sides MC, uh, we'll go along with KC in the same way that LC corresponds with JC. And we can set up that proportion in that way. So we have to think of it that way. And if we can draw those triangles out and remember that, uh, that'll help us set up our proportions uh, to find these missing side lengths. So we have that in our notes. And it's written in a different way. Once again, they've uh, drawn in, uh, shown the cross products for us. But a way that will help us remember this is if we take this triangle and remember that we have to flip this triangle over. And that triangle needs to match up with uh, the bigger triangle. So that top triangle just has to flip around. And so uh, in that way, it will match up. So I have to remember that this EAC needs to flip around. So EA is going to correspond with uh, ED because it reverses and it flips. In the same way that EC reverses and flips, matches up with EB. So once I set up that proportion... Yeah, then we've got this relationship because cross products are equal. EA times EB equals ED times EC. So don't worry about remembering this formula. Just remember the connection with our similar triangles. Uh, because triangles in geometry are always there. And if, if you can find those triangles, it's going to help you out a lot. Because you know how to set up proportions with those similar triangles. So why don't you pause the video and set up your triangles and figure out the proportions for this one. Restart the video when you're ready to check out the solution. Okay, so when we set up our triangles, I've got the big triangle and the smaller triangle outside the circle. I need to flip that, so QR is going to correspond with RT, so 6 to 5 plus X. And then RS will correspond with RP, so 5 to 10. Cross products 5 times 5 plus x equals 6 times 10. Distribute that out and simplify. So 25 plus 5x is 60. Subtract 25 from both sides and then divide by 5x is 7. And that's what we need to find. Okay, so set up your triangle, set up your proportions, and you'll be just fine. One more time, let's take a look now. Uh, we're going to take a look at these segments. J or MC is. Yes, you guessed it, a secant. And LC is, yeah, I think I heard that right, that's a tangent. So we're going to look at what's the connection when I have a tangent and a secant this time. So let's go over to GeoGebra. Okay, so we got our secant line and our tangent line. And notice if we were to connect those, we see that shaded in. We've got two triangles. 
and they don't appear to be the same, lined up the same, so, well, you guessed it, we're going to flip it again. And if we flip it, uh, reset that, here's our line that we're flipping it across. Notice, hey, there we go, there's our similar triangles again. Can't get away from those guys. So when we flip that around, we've got similar triangles, and we can match up corresponding uh, parts. So when we match these up, uh, we're going to notice that, well, M, let's color code it. There we go. MC to KC in the same way that LC goes to JC. Uh, so once again, when we reset that, we can see that connection. Uh, we've got this triangle that we're going to flip over. So once again, with this triangle, it's kind of outside the circle. Just gets flipped around, and we've got similar triangles there. So let's go back to our notes, and let's uh, record that information in. Uh, so once again, if we keep in mind, here we got that simplified formula for us, but like I said, don't remember that formula. Think of these as triangles. Um, and then we have to flip this smaller triangle around. So this side is going to match up over here. We've got to flip it over. And then the little side out here is going to correspond with the opposite side as we flip it over. So EA is going to match up with side ED. Those are the similar sides once we flip that triangle around. Same way that EC is going to correspond with EA. And notice once we set our cross products, EA times EA is EA squared, EC times ED. So like I said, don't remember the formula. If you, well, do remember it, but you don't need to memorize it. Just think in terms of triangles. So let's try to figure out uh, the example below. Pause the video and restart it once you are ready. Okay, so if I set up my triangles... I know the little triangle outside gets flipped over, so RQ matches up with RT, so 14 to X plus 12. And then I match up uh, this side, X flips over and corresponds with 14. Cross products, 14 times 14 equals X times X plus 12. Distribute that, and they get X squared plus 12X equals 196. Since I can't get the X by itself, since there's a squared, and an x, I'm going to get them all together to form my quadratic equation. So 0 equals x squared plus 12x minus 196. Remember there's multiple methods. Uh, we can either factor it, uh, use the quadratic formula, or solve by graphing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you, I can't remember the factors very well, uh, since it's a bigger number and they're, they don't come to me off the top of my head, I'm going to use the graphing method. Um, and so when I use the graphing method, I enter uh, y equals x squared plus 12x minus 196. I make an equation, and I want to find out when this equation equals 0. So in order to do that, I'm finding the zeros. Where does it cross the x-axis? When is y equal to 0? Two places, right here and right here. So once I graph my equation, I know that I've got a parabola. That's the quadratic. Where does it cross? At these two points. Uh, since I'm talking about a length, I know it can't be the negative value, so it's got to be the positive. So it's got to be 9.23. So there's your little algebra review. And I know x has to be 9.23. And it's helpful that I graph that because there's no way I would have gotten that by factoring because I don't know my decimal factors very well. So um, quadratic formula. Uh, or um, graphing it will help very well on that one. Okay, so a few final things we need to cover now. Uh, we need to talk about uh, chords when they intersect. So if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another, uh, we know this chord has to be the diameter. That's the only way that it will split it in half is if it cuts through the middle of the circle. And if the diameter is the perpendicular to the chord, uh, then we know the diameter bisects it. So the converse of that is true as well. So we'll take a look at that and apply that in a couple of problems here. Now let's just take a look at this example. BD is perpendicular to AC. 
Uh, so we know if it's perpendicular to AC, we know BD has to be the diameter or the radius. Um, we know BD would be part of the diameter, like our theorem just stated. And we know that AE and AC would be um, congruent. So if we take a look at number 7 down here, uh, AE is equal to 2x plus 1. So AE is this part right here. And AC uh, is 2x plus 20. So AC is the full length. Well, what's the connection between AE and AC? Well, AE would be half of AC. So I'd have to double AE uh, to make it equal to AC. So I just substitute the values in there. 2 times 2x plus 1. I would be equal to 2x plus 20. Then I could solve that and find x. So 4x plus 2 equals 2x plus 20. Uh, so I subtract 2x from both sides. 2x plus 2 equals 20. Uh, subtract 2 from both sides. 2x would equal 18. And then divide by 2x would equal 9. So that would be an application of that theorem. Well, let's just take a look at um, one more theorem here. Um, in the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So if these two are congruent, if G and F are equidistant, uh, that means same distance and they're at a right angle because um, that's the shortest distance. CD and AB will also be congruent. That's that biconditional statement. We'll apply that in a few examples as well. So I believe you have this section in your notes. I'd like you to try example 3 and 6 if we know that BD is perpendicular to AC. Uh, so think of what that tells us about BH. What kind of a segment is that? And what would be true about AE and EC? So solve those two and then restart it when you're ready to check it out. So our first example, BH, is 16. Uh, if that's the case, you know, I've got this triangle that I have here. I drew that out here. Uh, DC would be a radius. It would be half that, so that would be 8. Um, and I know AC is 4, so I know it's split in half because it's perpendicular. So EC would be 2. I just need to find DE, so I can use Pythagorean theorem since if this is, is a perpendicular bisector, we've got a right angle. So x squared plus 2 squared equals 8 squared. And you can see the work I did to get x equals 2 squared of 15. Uh, let's, I'll pause it now, and why don't you try number 6? All right, so ED is 6, DH is 14, since DH is the radius. I know DC is also 14, um, and I know I've got a right angle here. So 6 squared plus x squared equals 14 squared. You see I solved it down and got x equals square root of 160, which I can simplify as 4 square roots of 10. But I want to find AC, which is the full length, so I double that. 8 square roots of 10 because when I know this is perpendicular, um, when I know BD is perpendicular to AC, it's the perpendicular bisector. And we'll finish up by taking a look at a few more. So we'll finish up by taking a look at one last problem that deals with chords. Uh, why don't you try number two uh, listed right here on the page. Uh, try that example, pause the video, and start it when you're ready to take a look at the explanation. So in this problem, we'll apply the theorem where in congruence in circles, in the same circle, two chords are congruent if and only if <coughs> excuse me, they're equidistant from the center. So as we take a look at this one, I marked it out. BD is 12, um, AE is 20. Um, we know BD is congruent to HF, um, so we have congruent chords. I marked those in green. Those are both 12. Um, and since they're congruent, I know JK um, will be um, congruent to KM because K will be equidistant from both chords since the chords are congruent. <clears throat> Um, I know AE is 20. So the way I can figure this out, well, if I can find KM, I know that'll be the same as KJ. So I've taken this triangle and drawn it out here. I, since I know AE is the diameter, 
kf is a radius, so it will be half of ae. So kf will be 10. And since bd is 12, I know hf is 12. And since um, this radius cuts through the chord at a right angle, I know it's a perpendicular bisector. So mf is 6. So I've got a right triangle, x, 6, and 10. Use Pythagorean theorem. I get x is 8. Since x is 8, I know kj is also 8. So we learned a lot today, and I know it went a little bit longer than um, sometimes usually takes, but I want to make sure you understand the why of how some of these connections work. And instead of me just telling you the equations, if you understand the why and you know how we have these triangles that are similar, uh, it will help you understand uh, how to set up the equations to solve for them. So until next time, uh, you can get to work on your assignment.